We hope that this video clip allows all of our learners who are currently engaged in home learning activities to feel supported with their home learning and that if they've got any frequently asked questions that they may well find them answered in this video clip. Staff and pupils in Blair Gowrie High School are engaged in online learning in many, many different ways. This video clip will include a range of different ways that we're working online, support with usernames and passwords, a brief overview of Glow and Office 365, support with using Outlook email for the first time, support for Show My Homework and Satchel, and then some information on how Teams is being used. There is a skip too, so if you know which particular section you're looking for, this would be a good time to skip now. This video will be followed up by a second video, which covers, in a much briefer sense, the use of Class Notebook and Google Classroom. You'll find the link below this video when it's ready. We're using a range of different online learning platforms within our school to engage all of our young people and staff with their online learning and teaching. All of these stem from our use of GLOW, which is Scotland's online learning platform. Pupils will find that through GLOW, they've got access to Show My Homework, now known as Satchel One, Outlook for emails, Google Classroom and Microsoft Teams. Many different subject areas are using different platforms in different ways. So within art and photography, you may be using Teams to upload large files. Within the business studies department, you could be using email to practice sending professional business emails. Within social subjects, you'll be uploading your written work to Google Classroom. This is helping to prepare you or young people for life beyond school, whether that's in education or in work, where you may be faced with different online platforms that you've not used before. Now, with us using so many online platforms, one of the worries that some of young people may have had is that you'll need to learn and remember lots of different usernames and passwords. Now, that's not the case. As we use Glow as our tool to access all of our other online learning platforms, you only need to remember one username and one password to access them all. When you're using your Glow email address, do try to remember the second part, the at glow.sch.uk. This will be especially useful if you're downloading some of our tools where you may need your full Glow username. We, of course, as always, recommend that our young people use strong passwords, a range of different characters and symbols, numerical, alphabetical, and preferably something quite long. If anyone is having any difficulties in accessing because they cannot remember their username or password, or you get a message saying you have been locked out, then please do email Blair Gowrie at pkce.gov.uk. A member of our office team will then be able to reset your login details and get those back to you as quickly as they can. So what we want to be able to do first of all is to access the GLOW website. By finding the GLOW website, we'll be able to then get our launch pad that will help us access a range of online learning apps to support learning and achievement at home. So I would begin by doing a quick GLOW search, or sorry, a quick Google search for GLOW Scotland. When you've done that search, you'll get a range of findings. Try and select one that has RM Unify in the web address, as RM is one of the support platforms for GLOW. You'll then be asked to pop in your username and password. I would try and get in the habit of putting in your full GLOW email address, so including the at glow.sch.uk part. That'll be useful for some of our downloads later on. Pop in your usual GLOW password, and then once you've checked both of those are correct, press the blue sign in button. That will then take us to what we call the GLOW launch pad, and that's where you'll then be able to access a range of your online platforms. Show My Homework, Office 365 and Teams are just a few examples. Now, one of the most useful softwares that you'll be able to use and access through GLOW is access to Office 365. 
that'll give you a full range of Word, Excel, PowerPoint, and many other softwares which you can use. To access that, you just log in to Glow, select the Office 365 tile from your launchpad. You'll then see all of the different online apps and pieces of software that you can use. Again, examples, Word, Excel, and PowerPoint, particularly useful. You'll see an Install Office button in the top right hand corner. You can use this if you would like to install all of the software on your laptop or PC so that you can access them when you're online and you just choose the top option. If you're prompted for any usernames or passwords or to purchase a license, all you have to do is include your Glow username and your Glow password as you've already been purchased a license through Glow. To show you then how you may use some of the apps within Office 365, I'll begin by a quick demo of using Word through Office 365. So you're logged into Glow, you select Office 365, you click on Word, and then just like you would do in school, you have options to key in an essay, perhaps a report, you might be answering some questions that you've been set by a teacher, and this will also save itself online on the background every few seconds. You've also got access to the normal tool bar along the top to edit your fonts and sizes and styles to make your documents look professional. And in the top left hand corner, as you can see me doing just now, you can switch once you're in to any of the other Office 365 packages. So I'll show you just now how I would switch to PowerPoint. PowerPoint option is going to click on it in the middle. It will then load itself up and then just like the version in school, I'm going to select blank presentation to put together a new presentation. This could be finding some, some research. It could be a solo talk I'm going to record myself doing for my teacher. And then just like the normal version we use in school, down the left hand side, you'll get all of the slides. And then you can edit each individual slide in the middle with their usual animations, colours, designs. And the design ideas button also is now operating online, which can make your presentations look very, very good. I will point out again that it's saving itself in the background. I'm highlighting that just now for you. So it saves online. Now, some of you may be accessing the Office package on a mobile device. So you may wish to do that on your mobile phone, a tablet, it could be on your iPad if you have one. To do that, you just first of all have to search within your App Store for Microsoft Word, double check it's the official version. You'll then get to download that. You'll not have been prompted for login details yet, but when you click on blank document for the first time, you'll notice you get a bar at the top that will ask you to sign in to edit um, or to save any changes so you can press the sign in button. It's at that point that you'll get this screen coming up. You press sign in. You enter your full Glow username or email address. You'll then get to the next Glow screen where you'll enter your Glow password. Once you've done that, the software will be able to be used on your mobile device. You can type it in just as you were doing in the online version a minute or so ago. And then there's options in the top right hand corner to save that document. Now, I'd advise that you do get in touch with your teachers to work out how they would like you to save the document. Some teachers are happy to be sent a copy or a link to the document. Some teachers may want the actual document itself attached to an email, not shared with them. There's a difference between attaching a file, which gives them the full copy, or sharing the file, which lets them look at your copy. So double check that with your teachers. Now, those same steps for downloading can be applied to Excel, to PowerPoint, and to Teams, though I will touch on Teams later on. So you can get access to quite a lot of the Office 365 package on your mobile device. Your Glow account also gives you access to a Glow Outlook account where you can email your teachers or your teachers can email you. This can be useful for asking any follow-up questions, for submitting work, but again, do double check what each individual teacher is looking for from you. So in terms of getting started with sending an email into one of your teachers or checking your email inbox, you want to be logged into Glow. 
and then once you're logged into Glow, you want to select the Office 365 tile. And then once we're in Office 365, you simply click on Outlook. Now, the first or second time that you log in, you might find that it goes a little bit slower than usual. And you might also find that you've got some emails in your inbox already. Those could be from your teachers, from Microsoft Teams, from Show My Homework. And when you're ready to send in an email, you just press the new message button, which is in the top left hand corner. And many of our teachers have shared email addresses with some of our students. So do ask some of your teachers if you don't have them, if you're needing to send them an email. This could also be useful for emailing the school office, which you know is blairgowrie at pkc.gov.uk. You can then pop in the email address, pop in a quick subject, and then actually key in a short message to your teacher. Use then the attach button for any attachments you'd like to include and then you can press send. Now, some of you may be deciding to use your Outlook account through your mobile device, and that's perfectly fine. Again, from your app store, you're gonna search for Outlook, double check it's the Microsoft version. You'll be prompted to enter your email address, that should be your full Glow email address, and then you can press add account. You'll then select Office 365 as our email provider. You'll again be prompted to enter your Glow email address and then your Glow password, and you can press sign in. You'll then be presented with your inbox. There's an option in the top right hand corner to send a new message. Once you've written that message, I would double check a few things. Are there any attachments you need to include? There's a paper clip in the bottom corner. And then you have a send option in the top right hand corner. In terms of email etiquette, so some things to consider when you're emailing your teachers. It is always nice to get a hi, a quick message and a thanks at the end. Blank emails with files attached aren't always the nicest things to open up. If you're going to say that you've actually attached the file, Please double check it as attached. I'd advise to be careful with your tone. When you're sending an email message, it can be quite tricky to work out if someone's being funny or humorous, if someone's being sarcastic. Email doesn't always lend itself well to picking up on someone's tone. So just keep it professional. Adding a subject line is also very useful. Many staff who are using email with young people are receiving many emails a day, both from work and from students. So a quick subject line will indicate that, that which topic or which class the email relates to. As a school, we've been using Show My Homework for three years now. And some of you may be aware that Show My Homework has recently rebranded and changed their name and logo to Satchel One. To access Show My Homework through your Glow, username and password, you can just select the Show My Homework tile from your launchpad. So once you've clicked on the tile, you should find that Show My Homework then opens up for you. This may take a few seconds, the first and second time that you log in, but your device will gradually get quicker if you're accessing the same website on a regular basis. Once you're logged in, all of the homework tasks will appear in the middle panel. Now, this is a practice account that I'm using just now, so you'll see quite a lot of homework tasks in there. Overdue tasks will appear in the top section for you first. Those should be a priority to get completed. Then if you scroll down, you'll find the tasks which are due to be completed this week for their deadline. And then a little bit further down, you'll find the tasks that are due to be completed next week if you want to get a head start on any work that's already been popped in. I'm going to show you just now one of the tasks that I've set, just to talk you through that. When you open up an individual task, you'll find that you've got the date it was set and the date that it was due. You've got some instructions. And then when you're ready to submit the work, there is a submit button just along from description and results. But it is worthwhile to work out for each of your new classes and new courses ideally how the work is to be submitted for that subject 
as we are using many different platforms. I know, for example, in the business studies department that they're looking for the work by email, not through Show My Homework. I know that Miss Glynn in history is looking for work on Show My Homework. And I know that the art department are looking for the work through assignments and teams. So for each of your new subjects, it could be worthwhile just writing down how that work is going to be submitted. And that'll save both you and your teacher some time in the coming weeks. To show you work from another subject, this is a piece of work which has been set for an S3 English class. This work has been uploaded to show my homework. And when you have a look through it, you'll see it actually also contains a PDF. There has been a document attached to the work for the pupil. There's lots of reasons teachers might do this. It could be a worksheet for you to fill in. It could be something to give you some facts or information that you need to pull from. It could be to set the scene. I would always double check how many pages you've got. We've just seen three pages in that file there. Once you've read any attachments, have another read at any instructions that you've been given. And quite importantly, the instructions will tell you how the teacher would like you to submit the work, as I mentioned previously. So double check how your teacher would like you to submit that. Some might ask you just to key in any answers or responses you've got, as I'm doing on the screen just now for you. However, some teachers might ask you to attach a file or an image within Show My Homework. To do that, we would just go to the bottom where there's an add attachment button with a clip, a paper clip there. We'd click in and then we'll have an option to attach an individual file and you can just find that on your device. Now try to be careful if you are uploading a photo, but please try and make sure it is the right way around. We will cover in video two how you can flip them around. Just makes it much easier for marking for your teachers and makes your work look much more professional. When you've done everything on the task and you've double checked it, bottom left hand corner, there is a green submit button for you to send that work for marking, grading and feedback. If you're looking to access from my homework or satchel from a mobile device, then many of you are already doing this. Uh, a quick search for satchel in your app store. You'll be asked first of all which school you're attending key in Blair Gowrie High and then select us as the option at the top. And then you're presented with a range of different ways of logging in. I would select the bottom option, which is sign in with RM Unify. Remember, RM supports Glow, and that's the quickest way of using your Glow details to get logged in. Pop in your full Glow email address and your Glow password and press the blue sign in button. You'll then be presented with all of your homework tasks in order of priority. So tasks due today being at the top, then tomorrow's, and then as the weeks go on, you'll find the tasks uh, go down the list. So this is the opposite view from doing it in the online version. You can then click into a specific task. I've selected the English task that we had just a few minutes ago. And again, you can see the same instructions, the same set date and due date. If you can't see the full description, please click on the word description to get all of the instructions. When you're ready to submit that work to your class teacher, again, the paper clip is in the bottom left hand corner. And you'll get a range of different options. You can upload straight from your camera. So taking a photo, please try and make sure the photograph is taken the right way up. We will cover that in video two if you're not sure how to do that. It might be a photo you've already saved. Or you can use the browse button if you've got a Word file or a PDF file saved onto the mobile device that you're using. I would consider before submission a couple of quick questions again. Has your teacher asked you to submit it on my homework? or have they asked for it somewhere else? Has your teacher given you a specific format to upload it in? Have they told you it must be a photograph, it must be a Word document, it should be a PowerPoint presentation? And double check all parts of a task have been completed. It can be quite easy to not realise that there's extra pages sometimes, and you've only done the tasks on page one. So I would always try and scroll to the end of the document when you've been given work to do to check that everything has been actioned. Many of our teachers are using Microsoft Teams to communicate messages to young people, to provide advice and support to young people 
to give files to young people and in some subjects to provide assignments to young people. So I'll cover some of that just now and again I'll cover the online version and then the mobile version. Now the quickest way to get access to Teams if you're doing it online is to get logged into Glow. Then once you're into Glow, get into Office 365. If you've used Teams online before, you'll find it on your first screen. But if this is your first time logging into Teams online through this website, you can click on All Apps. When you click on All Apps, you'll then find you've got an option in the bottom right hand corner for Microsoft Teams. You just click on Teams there and that will open up for you, ready to be used. It will take about 30 to 60 seconds, usually the first time, whilst it loads up all of your classes. I'll apologise for the purple boxes on here, they're just covering some pupil names. So let's look then at what could be contained in some of the teams for this young person who's logged in. You'll see not every subject is there as not every subject is using Teams, but I'm going to click on S3 Admin to see what's inside of there. On the left hand side, I can see all of the channels. That's how that subject is organising the weekly work. I can then click into one of the channels and my advice is that you scroll right to the top of the channel to check you've not missed any important messages. You'll see that I've begun the week three work for that class just with instructions on what to do. I've also told my pupils that there's a files tab at the top that I'm clicking on just now that contains any important files I need them to use that week. Here I've got an example of a presentation and the tasks and a PDF. That will then allow the pupil to carry on the work that they need to do for that week and any pupils who've missed the work can always go back in and catch up on work from the previous channels. Let's now check that from a different subject. Uh, this time I'm going to select to use the S3 art class that I can see. Now we can see a general chat here where there's been conversation between pupils and staff, but we can see the assignments tab, which the art department are using for the submission of work. So let's click view assignment. When that opens up, I'll be able to see the instructions for the assignment appearing on the left hand side. And then I can see an option for my work. This is a file the teacher has given us to use. So I'm going to click on the option just now for the week four work. It opens up in Word format for us. I can see I've got a word bank at the top. I've got a nice picture there to perhaps give us some inspiration an annoying notification to get rid of, and then some questions at the bottom. On the menu at the top, we've got an option for the immersive reader that will read the document back to me if I'm needing some support with that. But to actually complete the tasks, I'll press edit document to edit my version. That would then open that in Word. Once I've edited it, I can press close. If I want to add extra work, I can click the add work button and then find anything additional on my computer that I've saved or my device that I've saved, and then using the bottom left-hand corner for upload from this device, I can then upload that for my teacher too. Once I've found the work, double checking that I saved before I've uploaded it, let it upload, and then press done in the bottom right-hand corner. Once I've done that, I'll have a double check. Have I definitely done everything I was asked to do this week? Yes. I can now press the hand in button in the top right hand corner. I'll get a quick GIF coming up just to indicate that I've done that. And excellent. If I then realise, oh no, I've made a mistake, I've got it wrong, I've forgotten a file, I can press undo hand in, reattach the file and then hand in again. Be careful to make sure you definitely hand in the work. Your teacher can't see what you've done until you press hand in. Now, if you're looking to access Teams through a mobile device or a mobile phone, you can just search for it again in the App Store. Once you've downloaded it, you'll be asked to sign in with another account and then pop in, as before, your full Glow email address. You'll get the Glow screen coming up next. Pop in full Glow email address and your full password. 
And then slightly different view to what we had just a minute or so ago. We've got all of the subjects listed here. Notice there is a triangle arrow on the left hand side of each. So you can click on that and then see subjects broken down into the different channels. So for S3 admin here, you can see the general channel and all of the weekly channels too. So I could click in and out of those to see any messages sent in that week or any files my teachers would like me to use in that week. This is an example of a message from the week three channel in one of the teams. Be careful to make sure you read all of the messages. You might need to press see more. I'd be looking for something at the end, usually a thank you from your teachers, usually to indicate the message is completed. So double check you're not missing any key information. The files tab will be along the top again when you're just in the channel and you'll find anything your teachers would like to use that week possibly saved them there. Just showing you the art channel again for S3. The assignments button that we've seen just a few minutes ago uh, looks quite similar. You'll still see the picture of the backpack. You'll still see the view assignment button. If we click on that. Again, just as before, we'll see the instructions. We can see the My Work file. If you click on that Word document, you'll be able to edit it. And again, I've highlighted for you the Immersive Reader button that can read the task out loud for you, especially if it's quite a long task. Word document is there for us to click if we want to edit. And again, we've got the option to hand in in the top right hand corner. Please make sure you click on the hand in button again or your teacher will not receive the work. Finally, Teams has been used to support lots and lots of online learning in different ways. But lots of your teachers are also sending out positive messages to you. Some of them are checking in on how classes are getting on. Some of them are organising their class check in meetings where you just click on the purple bar to join the meeting. Also keep an eye out because some of our pupils and students are also asking questions and you might find that the teacher has already answered a question that you're about to ask. So to save both of you a little bit of time, have a quick double check to see if anyone else has asked that question and you might find your answer. That's especially useful over the weekend, but teachers do need their downtime too. So if you're trying to work over the weekend, you might find you have to wait on a reply so have a quick check to see if someone else has already asked or someone else from your class can support over the weekend. So that's just a quick overview of a range of the different online platforms and some of the most frequently asked questions that we've had from young people. If you're needing any further support, consider having a look on YouTube. There are loads of clips out there from across the world on accessing teams, submitting assignments, uh, getting the most out of Show My Homework. So take a little bit of independence if you can and have a look. Consider messaging or emailing some of your class teachers if you need some advice, but do double check first. Has the question already been answered in one of the team messages? And then there is, of course, an email address of blairgowrie at pkc.gov.uk if you're having any real technical problems or are really struggling. Now, there'll be a follow up video too covering Google Classroom and use of Class Notebook that you might find useful. It'll be quite a bit shorter, but if you're having any difficulties with those platforms, I would have a look.